Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow, and today we have Jerry DeMeo from the Essentia Health Duluth Heritage Center. Wow, did I get that right? Essentia <laughs> Health Duluth Heritage Center. Uh, they will be hosting the Robertson Cup, the championship for the NAHL. So we're going to talk to uh, Jerry about the uh, Robertson Cup. This is uh, this is a big deal. Yeah, it really is, Ken. We're uh, we're extremely happy to have them come. You know, it's one of our first really national events that we've hosted in our building. Uh, we uh, we uh, have a lot of respect for Tier Two hockey in the United States, and especially the North American Hockey League. So we're excited about it. Yeah, uh, we uh, we sort of lucked into this deal. We when uh, reading a junior hockey magazine last July, we uh, read an article about the Robertson Cup. We presumed it was going to be at Braemar for the next two or three years. That's where it was last year, and we thought they'd be going back. Any Edina? Any Edina, yeah. yeah. However, it said, the, the tag, the bottom line of the story said that the site for the 2017 Robertson Cup had yet to be selected. Ah. I was pretty sure it was a misprint, but I sent an email to Mark Frankenfeld, commissioner of the NAHL, and said, uh, I'm sure it's a reprint, but in case it isn't, uh, we'd, we'd like to know if you'd want to consider Duluth. And that's kind of what started it. Nice. Um, we, uh, we sent an RFP. We got a lot of cooperation from our community. Visit Duluth was a big help. The Holiday Inn and Suites offered some really sweetheart room rates to be able to get these teams to come. Uh, we found some, some local sponsors who were helping us with feeding the teams, with taking care of the scouts and things of this nature. Uh, rolled out the red carpet for them. Uh, wow! No, yeah, that's great. That's it's great that you can get partnership like that. With great partnership, in and yep. uh, providing the meals and stuff. Great um, community partnership. Right. Yep. You need that in a tournament this size. Boy, do we ever. It's like a Stanley Cup in Tier Two hockey. The top four teams will be in town here, and it's great hockey, up and down action. And of course, we had to be a little concerned about the typical issues that Duluth always faces. It's a lot more expensive to get here than it is to the Twin Cities. And uh, as a, because the league picks up all the expenses for the traveling team, we did the best we could to mitigate those expenses. Uh, for example, um, you know, our, our friends at uh, Budget Rent-A-Car, the Crimson yeah. family stepped in, offered us four staff automobiles for them to use, which means they don't have to rent a whole caravan of cars in the yeah. Twin Cities yeah. to get here. Uh, so, you, so you and the community rolled your sleeves up we and did. went to work on this and, I don't want to say lured them, I don't know if that's proper, but uh, <laughs> you got them here and the Robertson Cup it runs what, May 11th? 11th through the 14th. Okay. Yep. Four teams coming into town with, of course, the, the complement of fans and family that typically travel with them. Uh, Central Scouting will be here, uh, The probably every college scout in the country, I would guess. Uh, uh, will show up as well for that event. I've got great media coverage. Uh, I know you guys will be there with your uh, proud media passes showing yeah. what's going on. Yeah. So we're, it, it couldn't be a better community. And hopefully when they leave, uh, they'd say, we'll see you next year. That that's what we're counting on. Yep, that's what we're counting on. Good, good. So then that means tickets. you got to fill the stadium. That's what I understand. Yep, they do want to sell some tickets. <laughs> tickets, in fact, are on sale now. All right. Uh, you can order them online with the uh, through the NAHL, or you can buy them in our facility. Um, we uh, we have the tournament passes are fifty dollars for adults, uh, forty dollars for students, senior, and, mil and uh, military personnel. That gets you into the whole uh, shebang from Thursday through Sunday. The, uh, so that's up to seven games. It could possibly. Eight, yep. seven games. Exactly. Uh, daily tickets are 20 bucks for adults, uh, $15 for students and seniors. Uh, military, children under eight are free, uh, so mm -hmm. that helps a little bit. And then, of course, uh, uh, the, that's then the, in the conjunction with that, we have the Future Prospects Combine, which I guess we'll talk about a little bit later, mm -hmm. and that's included in the event as well. Okay, so people can go to the Heritage Center. Uh, during uh, the hours you're open yep. and purchase tickets or a package. So That's what correct. hours are you open? Well, uh, we're open from dawn to dusk. <laughs> there you so go. So someone's in the office that will sell the ticket. Our business office opens at 7 and we typically leave at 6. So wow. from 7 so to 6, Monday day. through Friday, uh, we, the, they will be available to sell tickets. Uh, or you can order them online from the NAHL at any time. Okay, we'll, we'll put that on, Ken, we'll put that on our website and by tomorrow yeah and we'll put the prices up and uh, sure 
And by the way, since there's going to be four teams coming in here, Thursday night, uh, it'll be the first day of play, correct? Yes, that's correct. And about what times are the games? The games are scheduled now for 4.30 and 7.30. Yeah, they might change a half an hour, an hour or something like that. Yeah, I think, possible, we're, but... I think we're fairly well set with those times. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, as you pointed out, there may be games on Saturday night as well. It takes uh, two out of three to qualify for the cup final on Sunday, so... Yeah, because one team can win the first two days, and then yeah. they just have to wait until Sunday for the championship. Exactly. And if both teams do that, well, then Saturday night we can do something else besides right. watch hockey. Yeah. <laughs> well, we hope the Minnesota Wilderness, based in Cloquet, are uh, one of the teams that uh, show up here at the Heritage for the Robertson Cup Championship, uh, the NHL. Uh, what else is going on at Heritage? Well, this, this weekend in conjunction with, or not this weekend, I'm sorry, but the weekend of May 12th through the 14th, in conjunction with the Robertson Cup, we have the Future Prospects Combine. This is an event sponsored by the NAHL for hockey players, birth years 2001 and 2, for an opportunity to play with others of like competition, or like skills rather, in both a competitive situation uh, to have the opportunity to uh, be viewed in front of central scouting, NHL coaches, and college scouts yeah. so they can display their talent. But that's only one part of it. That's the experience part. The other part of it is the uh, educational part. The NHL will take some time to help parents understand the nuances of junior hockey, academic requirements to, uh, for, for school, for college, uh, typical NCAA requirements, uh, talking about the various junior programs in the United States, giving everybody an overview of that. And then last but not least, of course, it's done in a complete pr uh, professional environment. The teams are coached by NHL scouts or NA NAHL coaches. Uh, the referees are, of course, are local referees, but they typically pick from the top of the pile. So, And it's uh, a great opportunity for our local kids. Normally, I think the closest to an event like this has ever been, Jerry, what, the Twin Cities? Right. So if it's a three-day event, you're talking about uh, two nights of lodging, you're talking about food, you're talking about travel fuel. Here, you can sleep in your own bed each and every night, and the fee is only 250 bucks per player. Right. And I think every kid that wants to pursue hockey past high school should at least try something like this, because this is one of the better ones, because you're going to have all these scouts, recruiters, even uh, NA coaches and uh, from other teams and that are looking at these new kids, you know. And USHL will be there because they pick up a lot of 16-year-olds. But this is a 15- and 16-year-old kids, a 2001-2002. And hey, it's a great event for kids. And just the experience of learn what you learn is amazing. And they go about... Uh Getting involved with this, what, through the website, perhaps? Or they can register or? with uh, in the North American Hockey League website, www.nahl.com. Okay. Find the FPC tab. Uh, click on there, and all the registration information is available. Now, and we'll put that on the web. I'll put that on the website tomorrow, too. Yeah. We're no, saying the different. prospect yeah. uh, go to NAHL. Jerry DeMeo, President, CEO of the... Uh, Heritage Center, I keep on... Essentia. Essentia Health Heritage Center. <laughs> yeah, we got to get that right. And uh, you do a lot of good work out there, Jerry. You have for a few years now. Um, the Heritage... Geez, what, are we approaching a milestone? Are we up near 10 years at the Heritage Boy, Center? Your memory's great. Before we get off future prospects, fun guys, if I can. Yeah. The uh, Typically, most hockey players in our area find out if they're fit for junior hockey by going to junior hockey tryouts. After their senior year, they move on, um, and some of them go and uh, spend the money and come back. Right. This will give you a great chance, I think, for, especially for these younger kids, to find out if, in fact, they're going to be junior hockey material. It puts them on a radar screen for some of these teams hmm. and uh, could make some good things happen. Our local high school coaches sometimes get a little concerned about that. Because yeah, because they think they're recruiting their kids yeah, early. Yeah, and, and, and they can go early. But unlike the USHL, which requires that each team have four 16-year-old players. The NAHL does not have such a requirement. And in fact, they rather, uh, I don't want to say feast, but they sort of enjoy the 19-year-old kids that the USHL right. won't take because they've got a limit on those as well. 
So it's really a great chance to find out, am I, am I, do I want to play junior hockey going yeah, forward? Yeah. Is it right for me? And all it costs is 250 bucks, and again, you sleep in your own bed. I'll tell you another thing what's really nice about the North American Hockey League being older, at least half of the kids will play D1 hockey. That's amazing stat now. And you know, you go back 20 years ago, it was never hmm. like that. And now it's, it's just, the talent is there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, in the Frozen Four this year, uh, among the two NCHC teams in the in the event, Denver had seven NAHL wow. alumni. UMD had five. Now, granted, they probably weren't first or second line players, but they were in, on the yeah. team. They were wearing yeah, team jerseys. Right. Yeah. If you go back to 2011, the uh, winning goal was scored by Kyle Schmidt. Right. Kyle was an NAHL alumni, yeah. and of course the goaltender, Kenny Ryder, kept them in the tournament. <laughs> yeah. He also came through the NAHL. Last year it was Casimir Kaskasuo, uh, <laughs> who came from the wilderness, uh, spent his brief time at UMD and is now off doing some things. And if we counted the NA NHL rosters today, current mm -hmm. players, there are 73 NAHL alumni playing in the uh, National Hockey League, Jason, wow. <laughs> Jason Zucker being one, Christian right. Fullen being another, uh, Minnesota Wild fame. Uh, Impressive then, to say enough. And by the way, Kaskasuo in the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. Yeah. He is, with a bunch of other outstanding rookies. So yeah. life could be good for that uh, group for a while. <laughs> but that's what the NAHL is all about. It's the only Tier 2 league in the country. Uh, they, uh, they have 24 teams covering states from Texas to Alaska. Uh, it's a great experience for our community to get a chance to see some hockey beyond the high school uh, age and between college. And some of these kids will hopefully be playing at UMD in the years to come. Right. Uh, and uh, that's a chance to do it with, again, without having to travel and at pretty reasonable prices. The thing I like about this tournament, the uh, Robertson Cup, um, you have four different divisions from different areas of the United States. And some of the, like the Northeast side, there, there's hardly any Minnesota players on there, so you get to see what the Northeast hockey's like. Most of those players are from that area or up in uh, Canada even a little bit. And it's just fun to see different kind of hockey, how they play in that. And hey, it's a great event because I've been there a few times already. Well, I've been very impressed with the, uh, the uh, corporate support that the Minnesota Wilderness are getting in Cloquet, my goodness. Um, Cloquet is a small town, but they've got some great corporate sponsors and some great fan support up there. You know, they really have. Of course, if, if you had to pick a team from the North American Hockey League to have in your hometown, <clears throat> one you could be proud of, you wouldn't do better than the Minnesota Wilderness. Right. Chris Trapp is an extremely fine man right. who owns the team. Uh, David Boyce, their team manager, of course, lives in Cloquet. He's a part of the community. Uh, they try to keep as many local kids as they can. They've got about five, what, five Duluth kids on the roster right. uh, from Hermantown and things of that nature. And they really care about the community. It's, it's, yeah. it's more than just, you know, come on in and give me your dollars. What can we give back? And they work hard to do that. They do. So Cloquet is extremely fortunate to have them there. Um, God, we'd love to have them, you know, in our building, except <laughs> that we've got lots Too of Too much people. going on. we got lots of people in there now, but they're such a great asset that... Uh, um, we're just really, really proud to have them in our area. Uh, Heritage uh, Sports Center, uh, you're more than just hockey. We are. You got the Boys and Girls Club? <laughs> well, yes, we do. They're, they're daily tenants. Uh, we're, we're really all about kids. I mean, that's kind of why the building was built. That's what the, our primary mission is. And, of course, it's great to have the Boys and Girls Club coming in there every day uh, and using our building and having some fun. Uh, and, and, and their parents know where they are, uh, the community knows where they are. It's, a, it's just been a great venue for that. And then, of course, we do have our youth hockey programs. We have uh, high school hockey. Even though it was down a little bit this past year without Denfeld having a junior varsity team, um, the crowds were, we, we, we were proud of one thing. We had more kids this year, and we, this has been a, it's been a high water mark for my seven years at the center. High school kids starting to come back to hockey games. Uh, they have fun. They liven up the crowd. Yeah, gives us a home team advantage. Yeah, so it'll be kind of fun to see how that grows throughout the year. Well, you've got an attached restaurant out there, Clyde Iron, uh, the attached restaurant, along with uh, two uh, ice sheets. Two ice sheets. Now, are the, the the other ice sheet is 
Is that going to be taken out for this time of the year? Uh, well, it's out already. Okay. We have synthetic turf in there. Uh, and we do some non-sporting events as well, and it's easier to roll up the turf than it is to roll up the ice. Yeah, yeah. So do you, are you putting ice in for the prospects or just leaving it at one rink? Well, we thought to make it very interesting, Jerry, we'd see if they could skate on turf. How does that sound? Well, some of them can. The rollerblader is Zucker. That's all he learned. That's all he learned. <laughs> no, in fact, we will be putting the ice in again, okay. uh, taking the turf, rolling the turf up, putting the ice in for the weekend for the Robertson Cup, and then taking it back out. Okay. Brand new venture for us. Uh, yeah. If you recall a year ago, we took the ice out and put the turf in for the Minnesota Vikings. When we had the Vikings, uh, Minnesota they had their winter fest here in February of last year. Uh, that was a pretty good experience, but it's easier to make ice in February than it is in May. So sure. we're kind of anxious to see how that's going to work out for us. I heard from some source, I don't know who it was, says that there might be some adult beverages at the Robertson Cup. Is that true? Well, we're not selling alcohol, but uh, yeah, that's, right. that's right. Yes. Uh, we're not. Uh, okay. The the Essentia Health Duluth Heritage Sports Center does not distribute adult beverages. However, junior hockey is a part of their entourage. The people who follow junior hockey right. require that they, they're, they're older. They're not typically high school right. kids and, and they uh, occasionally like an adult beverage from time to time. So we have an arrangement now with the Clyde Iron Restaurant sure. where through the use of their catering license, they'll come into our building and uh, sell and uh, the adult beverages there. Uh, they have to be confined to the arena. Right. They can't be walking around the building right. with it, but people can sit in the arena and watch the games and enjoy an adult beverage if that's their desire. Oh, that'll be a new experience for some. It will be, uh, for not so, for junior hockey followers. So, yeah, yeah, it'll be just for that week, though. Yeah. yeah well, just for that event. Uh, right. we, we also had adult beverages in our building last year when we okay. had the uh, hairball but, concert. But that's even more, someone should go down there and buy their tickets right now. <laughs> Because <laughs> I go to I go out to Cloquet or the Northwoods Arena, and they have a lot of fun out there. They do, and, and it's a well-controlled <laughs> crowd. You know, yeah. it, there's there's a law, I guess, in the state. People need to know that. But in certain environments with a certain number of people present, wherever beverages are sold outside of the restaurant or the bar, they need a caterer's license to do that. The caterer's license requires the imposition by the city of Duluth is, is that you have a non a, a non-uniform police officer off duty on site. And the, the city typically tells you how many they want on site, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the number of folks you expect to attend your event. So the thing is well, you know, it's well maintained. Uh, uh, people aren't allowed to get out of hand. Um, they, uh, they can't be throwing things on the ice and expect to watch the rest right. of the game. Right. So it's, under, it's well under control. Right. And we don't have any kids in the building at the time, per se. It's not a youth event. So it just makes good economical sense. They, right. did, they did do some cons consumption in uh, Edina last year, if I remember. Yeah. yeah. Of course, well, the difference good. there is that the city had their own liquor license, so they could do that. Oh, okay. Jerry DeMeo, President and CEO of Essentia Health Duluth Heritage Center, and the NAHL Robertson Cup Championship uh, weekend is uh, nearing us May 11th through the right. 14th. Correct. And we hope that the Minnesota Wilderness will make it to this tournament. But let's talk more about uh, the Heritage Center and uh, um, what's new, what's in, what's in the near future? What type of things are uh, going on besides hockey and Boys and Girls Club? And well, you know, we, we, do, we do have some non-sporting activities. This past week, Tracy Lundeen was there with his uh, uh, event expo. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that go. It went really well. Good. At least Tracy said it did. I Good. had nothing to judge it by. It was <laughs> yeah. our first time. Uh, but he was happy to be there, and we were happy to have him. The first weekend in May, we have the AKC uh, Kennel Club's Obedience Trials and uh, Agility Trials for the dogs. Oh, I always like to affectionately say our building goes to the dogs for that weekend. Sure. And it does. Uh, <laughs> also in May, we do have the, uh, the uh, certainly the, the, uh, one of the community favorites, the Junk Hunt put on by the Broman family. It's always been a big event. It's grown out of the uh, Endeavor Center here downtown to our building. And when our building is full, they took it to the deck last year. So that's a big event. We expect a pretty good crowd from there. We had our Duluth Arena rummage sale, Lou Campbell's event this earlier, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, great crowd there. Really? Uh, yeah, I had about 1,800 yeah. people come wow. to the building mm -hmm. to enjoy their the spring. Uh, we. Uh, 
This summer we've got you know the typical youth tournaments. This week it's the Northern Wings AAA. Uh, we'll have the Northern Exposure Tournament coming up here soon in July, and then follow it up by the uh, uh, Northern Storm Tournament. So that keeps the kids busy in the summertime. Mike Randolph's camp is in there. Uh, How's Mike doing, by the way? Oh, Michael is our Michael is our <laughs> our favorite summer tenant. He's kind yeah. of one of our favorite winter tenants too. But yeah. but uh, but summer definitely. His camps, he lives there, doesn't he? He does. He does. He's a great neighbor. His camps uh, are, are helping us keep our lights on in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we haven't named the building after him yet because the well, jumped good. in first. But Mike's a, <laughs> Mike's a big, Mike, Mike's a grand tenant during the summertime. So yeah. we appreciate that. And then this past weekend, we had the Minnesota Hockey uh, High Performance Girls 1415 in our okay. building. Uh, so we're, we're busy all the time. We're always doing something. Uh, but like I said, daily we can count on the Boys and Girls Club. As soon as the summer comes, then the vintage sports camp moves in five days a week. Kids all over the place can, and we love every minute of it. Well, yeah. now's the time I get to put you on the spot. <laughs> there was talk back when the Heritage Center first opened. As we know, the progression was Peterson Arena burned. There was talk of the, uh, the Croc Foundation building on what used to be the old Holiday Gas Station by the Ordox. And then somebody came forward or approached uh, Alex Giuliani, who had the Clyde property, and one thing led to another, and lo and behold, there is the Heritage Sports Center. But there was talk of a hotel or a motel on site. Is that still in the works? Uh, is it? Well, that's a great question for Alessandro Giuliani. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I can't answer that question. So well, I my suggestion know. would be then, until that gets resolved, until you have something uh, uh, written down, uh, ready to go, use that area where that hotel space might go, because, you know, it's kind of, uh, there's some weeds in there and it's not paved. Put signs in there, four-wheel drive parking only. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, you know, that, that, that is kind of an opportunity. We did have uh, our friends from Duluth London Sports doing some things out there uh, early last fall. But uh, if, I, if you go there now, the grass is cut. Yeah. I mean, that's all I can tell you about this point. <laughs> that's nice. Um, there, there is no, no immediate plan that I think for any future development there. Um, but we're not going to let the reeds grow back. Very good. We got tired of making excuses like it was a natural preserve for some <laughs> rare plant or some rare okay. insect or some rare animal. So well, we're I not see, do that anymore. Excuse me, Chair. I see that uh, you have the, the showcase again, uh, Tier One, in the fall that you always have been doing. Yep, we want to we want to do that again, Jerry. The the uh, Heritage Tier One Boys Hockey Showcase has been a popular event for us. All right. We brought in some 16U and 18U teams from throughout the country. As uh, far away as Phoenix, Mike DeAngelis, a former UMD hockey player, is the general manager of the Phoenix Coyotes Junior Program. He brought mm -hmm. his team in. Dennis Vasky, who uh, an ex-UMD grad who spent his time with the Chicago New York Fire. Islanders, now has a Chicago Fire program. He yeah. brought his team back. Uh, we uh, brought the uh, um, Northern, Notre Dame Hounds from Wilcox, Saskatchewan, one yeah. of the premier country of programs in Canada, will be back this year. We lost Shattuck St. Mary's for a bit. The uh, some of these teams have now gotten more excited about the either the Tier One league, which keeps them busy, or they've be, they've been able to get entry into the Minnesota Hockey Tier One leagues. Uh, so they, they they don't have those open times that they used to have, but mm -hmm. we expect to have a solid program again this year. Uh, it'll be the weekend of October 27th through the 29th. We'll do some uh, uh, sharing with the deck as far as facilities are concerned. And, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be back in town. We're ready to go there. I don't know if you guys heard this, but it uh, looks like St. Cloud's going to get Hockey Day in Minnesota. They are, huh? Yeah. yeah. It'll be a good venue for it. Yeah. Wonderful then, venue. So I think both St. Cloud teams will be playing in it. Who they play, we don't know yet. But I think it's going to be both St. Cloud Cathedral and St. Saint just playing St. Cloud now. So that'll be good. Yeah, so I believe this is going to be the 12th annual Hockey Day Minnesota. And uh, St. Cloud is a big enough a community where they, maybe they should have had it by now, but it's, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be a good event. Um, any other details? Yeah, some uh, coaches, uh, some coaches uh, news. Uh, Grant Patoni, the assistant coach for the Gophers, Minnesota Gophers, is a new coach at Northern Michigan. Phil Ballou, a Duluth East boy, He's one of their top defensemen up there, and so that's a good job for Grant. Really? Yeah, from 
He's originally from Grand Forks, so this is the same kind of area almost. Maybe Grand Forks a little bigger, but pretty close. And then Michigan brought back Mel Pearson as the head coach. Replacing Red Barons. Yeah. Yeah. He's a Edina boy. Okay. Yeah. All right. He was at Michigan State for six years. Michigan Tech, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then uh, Trent Clot, I don't know if you heard this, USA Today named him the National Coach of the Year. I did catch that. That's pretty amazing. USA Today named Trent Clatt, Clatt. National High School Hockey Coach. Uh, of course, uh, Trent uh, coaches the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks, uh, champions of uh, Class AA. My goodness. Yeah, that's why it wasn't too surprising to me. You know, when you can claim championship to the Minnesota State High School Tournament, uh, and you come from a small community like Grand Rapids, comparatively small compared right. to the Twin Cities metro area. Sure, right. sure. I think that definitely deserves Coach yeah. of the Year award. Uh, you know, he, he has to he has to grow them in <laughs> Grand Rapids. Yeah. Right. I didn't know that USA did that or recognize. Yeah, that, I was National telling that to Jerry coaches. earlier. But hey, well deserving. Yeah. Trent's a great guy. He's done an awful lot for the sport. He's done a lot for the community in Grand Rapids. So it was good to see that uh, that trophy come back north. Too bad it couldn't have stopped in Duluth, but maybe next year. We'll, well we're see where it goes. just towards the end, real quick. Our Minnesota Wild uh, got bounced out of the uh, NHL playoffs in the first round to St. Louis. Um, you know, we can look at a lot of different reasons, perhaps. I think it just count, comes down to their, they didn't have uh, any lucky bounces. Right. And uh, they outshot St. Louis and right. uh, the majority of the games. Uh, their faceoff percentage was much better. Um, but in comparison to the Chicago Blackhawks, who got swept by Nashville. Chicago was outscored 13-3 to by Nashville. So, you know. Next season. When, yeah, <laughs> when, when we talk about what our team should do to uh, uh, be better next year and should the coaching staff remain intact, I think Chicago would have more problems regarding on the fashion in which they lost, being swept at home and only scoring three goals. But... I wish we had more time. We don't. Uh, Jerry DeMeo, President, CEO of Heritage, uh, I'm sorry, Essentia Health Duluth Heritage Center. Yep. And uh, we've got the NAHL Robertson Cup. Yeah. So put down on your calendar May 11th, Thursday through Sunday, May 14th, for the, there'll be the four top teams coming in. And you can buy tickets right now at the Duluth Heritage Center or go to NAHL.com. Or buy tickets on the computer. So either All right. way, yeah. so mark it down and get in there and get some tickets. Jerry, well, guys, thank you. Thank you for having me very much, and thank you for doing the great job you do in keeping our hockey community informed. Awesome. Jerry DeMeo, president of the Heritage Center in Duluth. And with that, we've got to say goodbye. Thanks to the staff at PAC TV that produced this show. Go to our webpage, minnesotahockeyconnection.com, and look us uh, up on Facebook and like us there as well. And we'll be back here next week to drop the puck. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.